So we live on the planet dump. See, but coinciding with that, we're born from the hump. I don't mean a camel hump. Okay. So we we are products of humping. See, so we hump ourselves. We've been humped <laughs> by our ancestry. We're the product of all this humping. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> right. Yes, we come from the Lord Humpty Dumpty. Come in. Uh, we, we come from that, but we're... Can we get beyond that? Well, then you have to stop humping and dumping, so to speak. See? Yeah, you see that? See? Humping and dumping. See? And then you understand why, why the human nature is so turbulent. It's so out of control. But we're born of the hump and the dump. See? Yeah. It's really not as funny as it sounds initially. See? Humping and dumping. It's our nature. See? So does humping and dumping create its own karma? Obviously. Yeah. See, we're born to hump see? and we're born to dump. Yeah. So maybe there's a sacred side to it. Maybe there's an enlightenment aspect of it. But the question is, do we have to be that? See, that's the issue. Do we have to be hump? See, is it all about the humping? Is it all about the dumping? See, how can that be done nobly and, and gracefully? See, so as to create less and less problems, less despair, suffering, and conflict. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of humping is it? It's conscious, relaxed, passionate, angry. See, see, see. This is just practice. See. What do you hump for? See, what do you propose to gain from your humping these days? What are you humping into marriage? See, and then what? Then you hump into divorce. And you keep humping, see, and creating more, more, more stuff. So then humping is creating. Creating what? You have to see what you create. If you think you're just humping for a little bit of pleasure, you know, relief, release, uh, you don't fool yourself. You've created something. But you don't know what the results are because you created, you started a cycle of creation there and you don't know where it's going. It all comes back to you in a manner of speaking, but not in the same way. Not as expected. See? That's why they say in the, in the traditions, beware what you pray for, you might get it, but not in the form you thought it would come in, in the way that it wants it, it to be in. See? And then we're talking about the etheric function in this universe uh, of creation and effect humping and what the dump is that you get stuck with, okay, comes back, what comes out of it. What's dumped on you as a result of your hump, see, your affect. So humpty dumpty, humping and dumping, it sounds silly on the surface, but when we look at it psychically, correctly, and spiritually, you see, yeah, what are you humping for? Because you can't just hump to get off. No, your humping is a whole different process. Getting off ends it, then terminates it, in a manner of speaking. That's the end result, like, like putting the brakes on. That's after the journey. See, of what? From where to where? Doing what? What did you see? See, what did you, uh, uh, what did you uh, stimulate? What did you exaggerate? What did you amplify? Key word. What, did you, what is your humping amplifying? Even though it's unbeknownst to the peeps, because they're, they're involved in the emotion. But while the emotion is part of the physical aspect of it, and the pleasure is being sort of like uh, indulged in and, and experienced, see. It's a mask. What is it masking? Yeah. It's like perfume. See. You're humping this perfume, indulging in sweet smells, at best. Yeah. But what's really going on see. is mixing. Yeah. But who sees it that way? People don't want to analyze it, they just want to enjoy it experience some kind of abandon or some illusory, imaginary escape see, from reality, their sense of pain. But it's the same thing. Uh, see, it's, it's the positive side of pain, pleasure. Uh, and it's the same kind of addiction. See. People need their pain because they need their pleasure. They need their pleasure because they need their pain. See. 
the two extreme sides of the same coin, the dualism, pain, pleasure. So you hear about this in all the dhammas, all the dhammas is, you know, have a field day with this kind of stuff, duality. Yeah. And for some, that's, that's the way, fathers, that's the problem. Okay. Recognizing it as such is part of the solution, part of it. That's not realization, you're just taking a look at it. See, because you, you can't have realization if you're just looking. You can't have realization as such if you're just listening. See, you can't have realization if you're just thinking and reading books. That's not realization, except that you recognize it's information. But, but what is it that is the realization? What is it that is the realization that is what it is, it's constant, it's present, but you have nothing to do with it, it has nothing to do with yourself, as such. This is not mysterious, it's not a riddle, it's not a puzzle. It's really understanding the nature of consciousness as a multi-dimensional, simultaneous reality, a simultaneity of reality. See? So it's not just one thing, so, oh, I got to do this. There's nobody that's just got to do this, because you can't just do this without everything being part of the mix. So what are you mixing when you're humping? What are you mixing forth? What are you, what are you creating that you're unconsciously creating for yourself? See? While, while you're in the, the, um, the, let's say, the hump experience, right? And it's opening your unconscious, because that's what you're doing. You're surrendering to the other person. But you don't think you are. You think you're just pleasing yourself or maybe pleasing the other person. No, your you inner opens, your inner darkness, your unconscious, and your reactive unconscious opens. So th this is really a portal. To where? To what? An orgasm? That's the end of it. So, well, nobody thinks about it. Because nobody's using it properly. As the uh, exercise in, in mixing consciousness or opening consciousness or the kind of meditation it is, maybe the tantric yogi is a, a better sense of this than others. But it's dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. It's just bondage. See? It's, it's a dump. You're entering somebody else's dump. And then you're taking that on, maybe. See? But when you look at the, the, the history of what this is in the psychology, let's say in the case of women, that need that experience, it seems, maybe even more than men, in a manner of speaking, and men need to squirt, so they are programmed to feel more than women need an orgasm, perhaps. If women want love, men want ejaculation, release, and all of this. They want to dump as fast as they can, see. So women want to hump as long as they can. Men want to dump as quickly as they can. And we say, okay, but what is really going on there in the mix? See. There's talk, oh, I love you, oh, what you're loving is your pleasure, and you're saying is that uh, you love the person. That's misinformation. Deception, oh, honey, you know, I love you. They're talking to their organs. Oh, I love you. We know that's true. Because as soon as it's over, it's like back to the same uh, in indifference. Say, say, not caring. Back to not caring. Say, but that was so beautiful. Yeah, but it's a real world, honey. It's a real world. Now we got to do this, we got to do this. So that, that's gone. That was like a fantasy, which it is. It's fantastic. Okay. So it's make believe. So there's no bonding there. There's no bond. So sex doesn't make a marriage, it makes a mixing, a pleasurable mixing. So we're saying there's humping with a result that's conscious, and humping without a result that's conscious. And then it's mishap. Women leave the sex act, the, 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 the mixing, the act of mixing. Say, so, well, I was feeling good before, but I had sex, but I don't feel good now. Say, so, well, what, what happened? When it was all pleasurable, and you're ooh and I and all the rest of it, well, what happened? So, yeah. Taking on karma. Maybe you took on an ancestor's karma. Maybe you had impressions from ancestry, all programmed into the blood. The DNA is there. You're, you're, you're indulging somebody's DNA, as well as maybe unknown parts of your own DNA. Sleeping memories of your own DNA, your ancestors. So what's going on there? Humping and dumping, it's a good question. Who's humping who? And who's dumping what? See, into who? So it's both ways. Because in that case, you're not really a man. As a woman, she's not really a woman. Because you lose that. You lose some sense of reality, identity. See? You go beyond gender when you're, you're moving in this way, mixing, humping, see? maybe transcending a little bit of suffering for a moment. See? 
but not really transcending, see. Experiencing other aspects of your own consciousness, depending on who you're mixing with. Because then, again, it's a mix. You can mix with a yogi, have a completely different experience. You can mix with a, a dude, so let's say, or a low, lower energy person. Women like the lower energy brute types, and then you become like that. So what you mix with, you better hope you become, because you're going to become it anyway. See? Affected by it. See? So this is a good conversation. It's far from being humorous, funny, or tacky. No, it's scientifically interesting. See, good point for psychologists to start looking at instead of making sex like that. You know, the solution to everything for relief for masturbation, which is the same thing. So what are you experiencing when you're humping yourself? Why? For what purpose? It's not that it's moral. No, it's a, it's a certain kind of process. See? Of activating certain forces, your ancestral line. For what? What are you learning from it? Because you're generating it. Say, well, what are you revving the engine for? Just to waste the, the gas? Or are you going somewhere with it? What's the use of it? To prove that you're just frustrated, you can't handle your energy, which is really what the problem is for most men. They have to have sex because they can't handle the energy. So they have to release it. In other words, energy is too much for men to handle. Women enjoy it. Men have to ejaculate because they can't handle it. Because if you knew what you were throwing out, what you were wasting and discharging, you would be hanging on to every drop of it. Because you don't know what it is, you just think it's waste. You don't see the relationship between the second chakra, your genitals, and certain functions of your brain. That means man is down here. And ladies, that's what you're humping. You're humping a dump, and that's being dumped into you. I know people don't want to hear this, but this is yogic, let's say, in, in basis, it's yogic. Not from India, this is native. Yogic means what you experience in coming to realization about your own processes. This is not about a, na a native in, in geographical terms. No, this is native in terms of living as your own biochemistry and letting it inform you, which is what it should do, tell you what's going on. See? So you need to talk to it. You need to talk to your emotions. You need to talk to your desires, as if they were other people in a sense. And this is not far-fetched. If you don't talk to them, who's going to talk to them? Your psychiatrist? So, in, in ignorance, we're, we're assuming this is a free process where there is actually a payment to be made in every case for participating in it. A payment? Well, you are the payment. You're living the payment. <clears throat> so then it's what, uh, what additional payments are being made. What debts need, need to be sort of solved, dissolved, yeah, and so on. Yeah, this is karma, the world of karma. Who's gaining what from what? See? I'm not saying you have to be a neurotic about it, but it's better to be a neurotic who's conscious of it than somebody who's sleeping and then who's a victim of it. See? Very simple. See? Sex is great, it's pleasure, but you want to make sure you're using it you know, as part of your progression and not using it to undermine your purpose. See? And if it could enlighten you and awaken you, I'd, I'd be recommending it ten times, a hundred times a day. I don't see anybody who's, who's very, very active in that sense being any happier, except when they're doing it, like an addict. Okay. So there's no, no result that is really worthy of comment, see, apart from, well, you're exhausting yourself and you're seeking to find something. You're fe seeking to find peace here and there, that way. It just doesn't come up. There's no peace. It's peaceless. And for many, it's heartless. It's just machinery. Meat. M-E-A-T. Nothing wrong with it. But what's the result or the evidence you're looking for? What pleasure and exhaustion to go to sleep? You do it to go to sleep? That's it. It will take you to the unconscious because basically it's more part of the unconscious than you, than you know. Than you're willing to see and ordinarily deal with in yourself. Because that, that kind of experience relative to mixing 
is part of meditation, where you, you open yourself up to all of those feelings and perceptions and desires and all the rest of that, and start to see them for what they are, rather than acting like they don't exist and there's a time for them and such. See? Oh, well, this is love. <laughs> Good grief. Yeah. As much as doing push-ups is love. Uh. <laughs> as much as kicking a can down the street is love. <laughs> Yeah, so love. Go to the grocery store for love. <laughs> Pick up a can of beans for love. <laughs> Crap for love. It's all about love. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it for love. <laughs> love of what? Loving who? What love? What level of love is that? What is love then? What is it? We're not talking about the heart. We're talking about, oh, it's doing for self-pleasing. I play for love. I'm indulging my love of self. I have to play for love. It's part of my image. See? It's all, all of this stuff. There's no heart in that. There's no deepness. There's no profoundness. And there's no silence as a result of that. There's no zip, no zero. See? No heart space. See? No depth. It's all neuroses. And the more fantastic and freaky the neuroses is, the, the, the more love. Full, it appears to me. Ah, oh, this is. Don't you love this? I love this. Like that? Yeah, just like that. Are you crazy? It's, I love it. You're nuts. <laughs> I can't do that. Oh, but I love it. I can go to jail for that. Oh, but I love it. Do it. <laughs> I love. Madness, <laughs> sickness is love. See, sickness, see. insanity then is love. See. That's what art is for: is to be insane and not go to jail for it. <laughs> it's what jazz is all about, right? See. So the beauty is still present in the midst of all this chaos. It's still present. The spirit is always present. You just need to tap into it and see see things from where it is. If you can imagine or conceive of or recognize that, then so be it. See? See? And remember, the only spirit is spirit. And that remains a mystery to most, even though they are that. See? In what way, from what level, are they able to enjoy the bliss of what that is, spirit, as spirit? <laughs>